Hi everyone, it's Sheila, and this is Thursday Night Tip Night. Tonight I'm going to talk to you about binding. And binding can help strengthen your quilt. There's two different kinds of binding. One is straight grain binding, and one is bias binding. And I'll explain both and why I prefer one over the other. Let's talk about, I'll use my whiteboard. And let's talk about straight of grain. I talked about it before. When fabric is woven, it's woven with pieces of thread like this, and then pieces of thread going across, and those are woven, and that makes your fabric. So this piece, when this piece of thread is straight of grain, and this is straight of grain, and this is straight of grain. So when you rip a piece of fabric, it'll rip along that line or this line, wherever you rip it at. It'll rip straight, and that's what straight of grain is. Bias is your binding, well, your fabric is on a diagonal, and you're ripping, you're cutting across here. So these are at a 45, and that's bias. Bias binding will give more. Anything on the bias will give when you pull it and tug it. Straight of grain gives you more of a fight. It doesn't give easy. So when you have a quilt, here's your quilt, and you want to bind it. If you bind it straight of grain, your binding will go, the threads will go all the way down from top to bottom this way and then across this way on your binding. If this weakens, this edge of your binding weakens, that breaks, that thread breaks. That thread runs the whole length of your quilt, all the way down. And I'll show you on this old vintage quilt I have. This is an old quilt. And if you look at the binding here, and I hope you can see it. It's weakened along the edge. But what happened is then it rips open all the whole length of the quilt. And I hope you can see how that's weakened that quilt in that binding. So it's just falling apart the whole length. But if you cut it on the bias, here's your strip of binding. Here's your quilt. And your strip, your, your binding is actually the strip on the bias would be running from here to there, here to there, or here to there. It doesn't go. It just goes from the front of your quilt at a diagonal to the back of your quilt. And if that thread breaks, that's all the further it's going to go, is from the front of your quilt at a 45 degree angle to the back of your quilt. It doesn't run the whole length of your quilt. So bias binding, a lot of people do not make bias binding for square or rectangle quilts. They do it when there's a curve, um, like a grandmother's flower garden, where the outside border of your quilt is scalloped because that bias will give and you can make that corner, that curve real easy. And they'll use the bias binding. But actually bias binding is great for square quilts or straight of grain quilts because it makes your binding last longer over the years because it's going at a diagonal from front to back and that's all the further that grain is gonna go. If that thread breaks in that binding, it's just going that far. Where this, if you put it on your quilt, it's running the whole length of your quilt. So I prefer bias binding. I don't always use it. If it's something that I'm not thinking is gonna be something I'm passing down and having as, you know, that as an heirloom or something that won't be washed a whole lot, like a wall hanging. A lot of times I do straight of grain, I'll admit it. But if it's something I'm putting in a show or I want passed down, it's something that will be an heirloom in the family, then I would use bias binding. And there's many YouTube videos how to make bias binding. And that's what I wanted to show you tonight. Now, I will show you how to stitch your binding on to the back. So let me redo my camera, and then we'll move on to that. Okay, I'm back now, and I want to show you some different bindings. This one, 
um, a friend picked up at a yard sale and I want to show you the stitches first of all the stitches are really big and they go like a uh, whip stitch clear across and the thread they picked was the color of the backing they should have picked the thread the color of the binding not the color of the backing pick the color of the binding for your when you're hand stitching your quilt binding now the next one is similar they didn't pick a color that was close to either one they picked black and you put all this time and money into making your quilt and you want to get um, you want to get a good finish on it and these are running stitches just great big long stitches dark they show up really brightly also on this one this ba this um, binding is very wimpy if you can see there's the when I fold that there's the edge of the quilt and the batting and they have this much fabric like almost a quarter inch that there's nothing between there it's just fabric against fabric there's no batting in there and that's going to weaken that binding you want to have a nice full binding so this should have been cut smaller or pulled so it was like this or you could also as you're stitching you could put little pieces of batting in there to fill this up so we call it a wimpy binding you don't want it like that so I'm going to show you how I stitch binding onto a quilt. Okay, here's a quilt I'm working on. If you can look here, you can't really see my stitches. So this is how you, uh, you bind a quilt. What I do is I usually hold it this way. And right where that thread comes out, you want to take your needle and put it right next to the binding, straight down in, through the layer of the batting, but not through the front of the quilt. And then come up through and just catch a couple little stitches in the binding. And then push your needle through. So right where this came out, you're going to put your needle straight down right where that came out, right under the edge of the binding. And then you're going to take a little stitch. You don't want to make, you just want to catch a couple threads and come up through. give it a tug so it's tight and look at those stitches you don't even see those stitches and that's how it should be you want your finish on your quilt to be as nice as the front of your quilt look how pretty and my binding is full there's no wimpy binding it's all full of batting that's how the edge of your quilt should look and this is what it looks like on the front so I hope this little Thursday tip helps some of you if you have any questions or comments, please leave them and please uh, sign up to follow me on Instagram and on YouTube and Facebook. Thank you.